straight down the sector. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson. In today's video, we have a practice that includes five throwers, three are in high school, and two are experienced post-collegiate throwers. I think it's really important to see what kind of goes in behind the scenes. It's really easy to look at videos and kind of say this thrower should do this or that, is missing this or that, but you don't necessarily know what's going on. You don't know if there's mobility issues, you don't know what kind of training restrictions there are, you don't know what the type of athlete you're dealing with. I put my arm down and I reach forward. So you're not going anywhere. And first up is Max Rubin. Max is one of our throwers. He's been throwing with us since the eighth grade. He's made really great progress and he continues to get better. Biggest challenge he's had is feeling the throw. Now you're gonna notice what we do in our practice here. We're gonna go through our progression. Start with the modified wheel or the 180 or the half turn, whatever you wanna call it, working our pillar three, four, five, six. Woo! Max is gonna start his own like Look at that shit. There you go, Max. Look at that. <laughs> There's been a lot more progress than just what you would see. When we show you the before and after, you go, wow, that, that's a huge difference. What you don't know is along the way, he's a good hard worker. Thing is, is he didn't feel the throw well and not until recently, until we made some shifts to be again, a little less technical and focus more on rhythm and feeling and really trying to uh, equate motion into his thought process. That's all started to make a huge difference for him and progress has been really, really good, especially the last few weeks and I'm really excited about where he's going. We have a strength training for throwers, two workshops coming up. Learn how to structure your strength training program to optimize your throwing technique. We're gonna talk about it, two upcoming webinars. Check the link in the description. We'll see you guys later. So Nate is a perfect example. We talked more advanced athletes. He's, he's competed his PR is 6440. It's 211 plus feet. Nate has worked with some great coaches in the past. So he's been using the system now for about a year. He's made a lot of really good progress. He's understanding his throw a lot better. We're showing him how to create positions. Now, one of the things we're dealing with is his actual, he has hip and some ankle mobility limitations. Great shape, strong, lean, but is a perfect example of this. So even though he looks apart, there's still some little structural things that helped optimize his movement and he's an older athlete who's working a full-time career position ah you missed that one under rotated that left a little Jordy Ellis. Jordy was a ballet dancer, and so Jordy was taught on how to hold his posture and core. He has good posture, but he also has a posterior pelvic tilt where the back of his hips kind of tilt down and the front of his hips tilt up, and this causes a whole bunch of issues in his throw. We recommend, we like front squats as a big part of our training cycle to add in squat movements because they has a lot of correlation over to the throw. Jordy's actually better off with back squats because he has that posterior tilt. There's a lot of different things that Jordy does that are happening technically and those are creating challenges so we have to make adjustments based on the posture type so we look at the weight room and how we're affecting the posture Jordy came in as a sophomore so now we're trying to increase his weight and add some needed mass to and strength to his throw the lower body comes there so Jason Harrell's been to five consecutive U.S. championships. At the end of 2019, he had some adductor injury that was kind of a reoccurring annoying injury. So we've restructured his lifting program this year. He's slowly getting his strength back. He's been getting into good technical positions and things are moving along really well. And here we have him throwing a heavy bar so he can again develop some specific strength and feel some very specific things related to the technical positions. That was actually pretty good, Jay. Mason is a really quick athlete. Strength levels have been going up. Core was really weak, hamstrings were really weak, and that was creating some limitations technically. So because he's really quick, we decided to move to an offset and he's learning the timing change. So his distances are slowly going up, but he hasn't found that really great rhythm yet. And that's what we've been working on. Where'd you slip, in the middle? <laughs> yeah, you, you floated, right? So here's a perfect example where Mason kind of hit the middle. He was just, his angles were off and he slid. You know, you're going to miss throws and you're going to have weird things happen. That's part of a throwing practice. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into what we do with the throwing chain reaction system. If you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices and find the things that help unlock your potential, click the link below and we will see you on the next video.